Hello everyone and welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Josh, joined as ever by Ash Millman. And I know you've seen the headline, you've clicked onto the video. Whoa. We are once again talking about microtransactions. Again. But EA just can't again. help themselves, Ash. They've recently just purchased a patent for a kind of insidious microtransaction system mm. that it's really confusing. So sorry, we're going to try to sort of talk through it as simply as possible today. But essentially, this would um, include in-game purchases yeah. in games which already exist. Exist, but it would put a premium on buying them as soon as possible. So they, these microtransactions would essentially decrease in value the more people bought them and then make them more useless as sort of the game went on, which will encourage people to, as soon as they see them, theoretically, purchase them day one. They have been referred to by a bunch of outlets who have reported on this as day one microtransactions, which kind of, honestly, makes my skin crawl a it's little bit. It's really gross. It's really, really gross. If everyone's buying something, that just means it's nice. Share the love, yeah. Share the love, like, please. If you're getting the, enough money from the microtransactions, there's no need to make them like premium, like a limited edition, get it as quick as possible thing yeah. as well. Then I've got a little quote about it. I've got a little quote, which was, um, offers may be provided within the game instance of the game space that decrease in value based on previous acceptances of the offers. This is worded really badly, it is. but it's their statement. I read this book, yeah. Yeah. The offers may include a first offer having a first value that progressively decreases based on the amount of users that have previously accepted the first offer in order to incentivize early acceptance of the first offer. All this talk about first offer means yeah. that they're going to put different price points on it, though, as well, surely. Like, obviously, when it decreases in value from getting it at the first instance, if they then bracket it up in, like, yeah. price point and say, oh, we can buy it at this price point and it'll be valuable again, it's bad. This is fascinating to me because the changing scape of sort of loot boxes and microtransactions mm. has become sort of, as EA and other publishers attempt to justify them, they mm. have changed from being sort of pay to win machines that yeah. give you better weapons to it's just cosmetic. And Jim Sterling has done a bunch of great videos on analyzing the impact of, you know, social pressure in video games mm. and how microtransactions now are sort of used to pressure people socially when they're playing games with their friends to <sighs> buy new skins otherwise they'll feel left out there was a great report i think it was on bbc yeah. about um kids being known as sort of like default on fortnite because yeah. they if they jump in without having you know purchased a battle pass or gotten the skins yeah they look like a, a, a noob or I whatever had, you know? i had this like i was like oh maybe i'll just try and give a little bash and you go in and you're just like the really boring like person with a, a pickaxe and that's it yeah. and you don't have any of the fun stuff and then you've got to win things and you've got to have the battle pass to be able to get the things and i was like well i don't want to play i'm not cool like exactly I, they're gonna know they're gonna know that i'm not I've been playing this it sounds kind of you know dumb because it yeah. is optional skins are yeah. obviously you know optional things they don't impact gameplay but they do impact how you interact with the game yeah. especially if you're younger when i remember playing call of duty 4 and then um, weapon skins there were sort of a big kind of badge of honor if you got yeah. so many headshots you got you know blue tiger or red tiger mm. and i remember the real desire to keep up with my friends as they mm. unlocked those skins and got you know the eventual gold um, weapon yeah. skin and I felt kind of like if I was falling behind and it sounds it does sound dumb especially if you're an older gamer but so many people who play these video games especially mm. things like Fortnite especially EA games where you've got you know FIFA yeah. open to the broadest market possible they are played by a lot of younger people and those social pressures evidently are there and yeah. will impact their social circles and how they interact with games and their yeah. desire ultimately to want to pay for more things in video it's games. just, it's just, it's so horrible that they like market on all. It's the, it is the badge of honor system. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, I've earned this through doing this many headshots. I've done this many kills. I've done this many melee weapons. Like that should be what you get your skins and fun stuff for. Like it should be yeah. just an add-on to an already great game that you're enjoying and then can customize a little bit. It shouldn't be right. Please give us all your money to make this a customized experience that is basically the entire thing. Like yeah, and, and obviously this patent, if it's it, EA did clarify that it's currently not in any games and they also clarified that they didn't originally file it they bought yeah. it but you know the fact that they bought it at all means they are at least considering it yeah it, yeah. again it might not you know eventually make it into new releases mm. but you know the, we it's, don't know yet that's the problem and judging on their past history they could very easily try to yeah. find a way to include this and then get away with it because all of the videos we do about this, <gasps> this sort of, of topic them. all of them so many of them is you know essentially talking about how publishers you know push yeah. it as far as they can possibly go and then they will backtrack if people get annoyed but mm. they are trying to push the envelope they are trying to see how much money they can make yeah. because ultimately microtransactions make these companies like up to a billion dollars yeah. a yeah. year 
it's absolutely outrageous. But it is. It is absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, they, they've said that it's not part of any current EA games or technology, um, and then and we are not planning to include it in any of our games, which yeah. is interesting because they said that it came from uh, the patent was originally filed years ago without any of our involvement. It came to EA through a previous asset acquisition, which was publisher Kabam, who are a mobile operator yeah. sort of person. So and you um, can see that sort of operating in a mobile space more than yeah. a AAA space, but it's Still. it's just when, when we've had patents like this sort of be filed and leaked mm. um, before. Activision had one a few years ago oh, wow. where they were trying to alter the matchmaking system yeah. to put people who didn't have the DLC and sort of the expansions in with people who kind of did or who had better mm. skins to sort of create a, a level of sort of envy yeah. so you would see the, that content and then want to go and buy it. EA had a similar one, I think it was yeah. from um, 2016, which again, you know, focused on the sportsmanship and play style and play skill of players mm. to mess with the matchmaking. Mm. Again, these are just patents. These aren't actually, you know, included in any games at the moment. But the fact that they're just kind of, you know, out there yeah. being explored, people are looking for the best ways to kind of, you know, manipulate mm. people's sort of, you know, want to buy these yeah. in-game purchases. It just kind of sucks. It really does. The old the old um, patents they were talking about was like mostly, they kept mentioning spending as something that they could measure and then you uh, use in their like optimization practices. So like yeah. if they saw someone that was buying loads of DLC, loads of extras, then again, put it with the lower level players or put it with other people who don't have the same thing. Like they were using it as an analysis tool rather than just like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, here's an extra for some fun stuff that people might want to buy. Like it's, it's just so money driven and there's no heart to any of this, which is like, yeah, it, it yeah, just goes yeah. against what gaming has been for so long. Like, well, that's that thing. And it's like the sort of basic systems. You've got, you know, your skins, you've got mm. unlockables, you've got the sheer sort of act of matchmaking yeah. and being in lobbies, all being sort of tweaked so that your, essentially your gaming experience is being changed kind of mm. forever. This is not how yeah. we used to do things. And that kind of sucks because like you said, there is no real heart to this. This is obviously entirely business driven. This is not this does not come from a sort of creative mm. angle or a creative perspective or a desire to make, you know, games as art or anything yeah. like that. It's purely money grubbing and that's, you know, I was going to say it's fine, it's kind of not, but you can see where they're coming from. Mm. These are businesses and they need to make lots and lots of money and they do make lots and lots of money and they're not just going to give microtransactions up because a lot of people on the internet like us keep complaining about them because at the end of the day, people keep buying them and the um, super whales or however they refer super to them. Super whales? Oh, have you not heard this, Ash? No, I haven't heard this is, this is in in a bunch of sort of presentations by people who work on mobile games yeah. or work on these systems. Again, there's another great Jim Sterling video mm. on this. They refer to their highest spenders as mm. whales and super whales. And these are the people they rely on to um, buy their in-game purchases and essentially, you know, their livelihood and profits. That and says everything. Very dehumanizing, isn't it? That it's says very, everything. Very crappy. Whales and super whales, there's, there's one thing being a business and there's one thing having to make money. Of course, we all know what the pressures of that. Like everybody has to make money. Yeah. That's how it works. And understandably, they have microtransactions in. Just do it for customization. Like just do it for a, like a skin, like the odd skin, like a nothing else. Like, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't mm -hmm. need to be everything. It doesn't need to be every aspect of a game. Like people are looking at making games to make money rather than making an enjoyable experience that they can they can then turn into something with profit on top. Well, you know what I mean? that's it. I, that's where these sort of patterns kind of, uh, well, that's why they're so worrying because yeah. then the enjoyment of the game itself yeah. becomes secondary. We saw it when um, grinding was a big mm. thing. You had to grind hours and hours to unlock stuff. And that was hampering your, you know, instant enjoyment of a yeah. product or a game because you eventually, you know, would get sick of it and either yeah. want to pay money to unlock what you were working towards or you would just give up because the grind was mm. too much. And it's when it comes down to that sort of granular gameplay level mm. that I just I just cannot get on, on board with it whatsoever. I tell you what, have you played Come on, then. Ghost Recon Breakpoint? I haven't yet. It's out this weekend. I didn't manage to jump in the beta, but you know. Oh, well. tell, me, tell me about it though, Ash. I haven't played it either, but I have seen a Reddit thread that has been posted on many news outlets, which I'm now going to read. Please to read you. it. It's very long, so buckle in. This is from someone who's managed to have a little play of it, because we haven't. So, as I have bought the Ultimate Edition, I am able to access the game right now. I have taken screenshots of the store in the game, and most cosmetic items are brought with ghost coins in the store. Figures such as the wolves and their individual armor pieces are all only purchasable with ghost coins. This really pees me off. <laughs> in the closed and open betas, betas, the items are all misleadingly labeled, locked to make sure people won't have a bad impression thinking they can grind these armor pieces in the game. Items are also overpriced. A single cosmetic item costs an average of $6. Camos Oof. such as multi-camera only able fan sick uh, on Gollum Island basically the end game raid island this is despicable <laughs> 
See, I would agree. This this yeah. is what I was just saying like earlier. We've seen kind of publishers mm. move away from microtransactions. It's become yeah. a sort of dirty word, and they dipped on them a little bit. Yeah. But now it seems to be kind of coming back up the other side. We've got oh, Activision yeah. doing similar things again, locking what people know about the microtransactions from yeah. betas and early sort of previews and even reviews, and then rolling them in later. Mm. And Ghost Recon Breakpoint obviously didn't have it in the betas, but yeah. now it's in the early access version of the game, and it's just like. It's just sneaky. It's, no, it's, it's, that's what it just feels like. It. It's, like. It's very sneaky. If you're gonna do these things and yeah. you're gonna be so blatant about them, then just be blatant about them. I've always said like the messaging is key. You mm. can't expect to. You can't hide stuff from players and yeah. then expect them to be fine with it when you drop it on them two weeks after launch or even on launch. Like, come out and be open about it. No one's ever open about the no, microtransactions yeah. or what they're doing with them. There's been so many times where they've said, you know, developers have had to say, we, we're not doing them, and yeah. then p perhaps being overridden by a publisher who's implemented them anywhere, mm. which makes them look bad. It kind yeah. of sours them on the community. It just doesn't breed a nice, healthy community, which is, at the end of the day, the thing that yeah. makes these games a success. Well, I just mean, if more Ghost Recon comes out, like in a couple of years or whatever, who's gonna go, oh yeah, I want to buy that. I had a great experience with the other one. We might have earned them loads of money in the in the grand scheme of things for this short-term time period. Yeah. But as a franchise and as a name, they just lose all of their reputation. And it just, it's only gonna shoot themselves in the foot in the end. Ubisoft's a weird one as well. I love Rainbow Six Siege. It's one of my favorite games mm. of the generation, but my opera is in that game. A barely kind of different from the ones I had at the very start. They have no real unique skins mm. because the price of unlocking skins yeah. in that game is kind of like ridiculous yeah. and it's it's offset because they do give you free content they do give you new characters they do give you new maps and that's sort of like the excuse mm. as to why the pricing system is kind of so messed up but I don't know how long that you know excuse is going to hold yeah. when so many games now don't have a season pass and do have free DLC yeah. and yet keep jumping on all of these different monetizable aspects Blech. but Blech. that's enough that's for one day I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Okay. We already know Ash's opinion. It's yeah. the. But please let us know down in the comments. And as always, give us like a sh And as always, <laughs> give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh joined by Ash. Hello, that's me. Goodbye. And we'll see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>